Molinet from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at the Compass at PCU once more again to spread the message of freedom. And before I begin, I'd like to put out a special announcement for the next month's Freedom Gathering in November. Uh, it's going to be located on the 17th, a Saturday. Doors open at 7 p.m., Pollock begins at 7.30, and the Philosophical Workshop talk starts around 8 ish, 8.15. And so the two kinds of workshop talks that are confirmed to be presented there, one's going to be by Herzog Forest on Bitcoin. So anything and everything you want to know about Bitcoin, we have our Bitcoin guy here in Richmond to, to talk about it. And so and it'll help you set up your first Bitcoin wallet too. You know, just bring uh, your phone device. We'll have a lot more information along the way, but uh, yeah, for anyone that's curious about Bitcoin, how it works, you know, come to our Freedom Gathering. And the second talk, second workshop talk, will be on sustainable energy practices by Johnny Howie. And a lot of interesting ways we can look at, uh, I guess, uh, the urban society and the, I guess, inefficiency of the state versus, you know, free market ideas. And so he's going to be uh, presenting that there as well. So that's, uh, I don't know, that's, that's something to to start looking forward to with a lot of these freedom gatherings that they continue to evolve, a lot more workshops, a lot more ways and opportunities for you to, to come and pr perhaps uh, give a workshop or talk yourself. You know, this is, um, this is just a community of individuals that want freedom in our lifetime, but ways that we can also share this message, uh, helpful, helpful ways to kind of see the world around us, to achieve efficiency, to achieve happiness, enjoy, um, you know, all these areas that the state continues trying to find a way to kind of squash down and, um, you know, put down. So with that, uh, hopefully you enjoy this video content for today, and I'll see you guys at the victory party. Take good care. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind government. This organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, single way, right, to the threat of and use of violence. Versus the plurality, though, of non-violent solutions that you and I and my, my friends here already share. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I get, I get your point, and I think it's a good one, but I just think that government's kind of a necessary evil because you can't just have anarchy, you know? Anarchy would just be even worse because people would want power to enforce their views on other people. Right. I mean, think about like out in Afghanistan when there's tribes running around just with AK-47s and enforcing their beliefs on these villagers out in the middle of the desert. That's not that ha not happen here too. I mean, it's just the United States drone bombing democracy in countries overseas. I mean, that's what that's. I don't agree People with. People will it, see that chaotic and evil. Yeah, right? it is super chaotic and evil. But I mean, all right. So let's look I, at the. I, I believe that. I, yeah, I agree with you. But right. I. The, all right. So let's break this down. Unless there's a better. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Alternative. So let's break this down yeah. objectively then. Like areas that we feel are necessary, right? Mm -hmm. The government provides. So government objectively has a monopoly on the services I want. Mm -hmm. Right? They have a monopoly on law, on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on even currency, on first class mail delivering pieces of paper. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, withdraw your payments, or even have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services, provide a better service or security, for example, that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you that they Right? I still want these services, but that's, these are the areas the government has monopolized that no one's allowed to provide a free market solution, non-violent solution. So what you're saying is just get rid of the government and let free market take over. Yeah, place. homestead so and super libertarian view. Uh, I guess I, I, yeah. I, go, I go further. I'm a free market anarchist. Okay. Uh, even by definition, in anarchism, it just means without political rulers. No political rulers, no one to bribe. Right. Right. It goes back to the way like consumers now have the power, like Netflix. Try to raise the prices over overnight last year. People like forget that. Cancel, unsubscribe, go to who? Right. Right. Now you have all this other people that can provide a better service. Right. But government though, they can't go bankrupt. You can't really sue them they have a liability you have mm -hmm. immunity from that and the same way they extend that to corporations so without government there's no corporations it goes back to the way it used to be yeah the whole person liable for own action. until the government pisses off the collective but if there's no government there's, of there's people no. and then we're just gonna be like torches and pitchforks right yeah and, and, and I want to prevent that I don't want to go there I mean yeah but, and there's the violence well that's the violence back. because of government yeah. so we have a moment here to 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 realize that we share these fundamental views against violence that's called the non-aggression principle you universalize that to anyone to everyone all over the world no matter what tie to your claim what costume blue or green you wear or what piece of paper or badge you hold it's wrong for anyone to initiate that violence but unfortunately, that's how government is funded on. So without government, it goes back to real contracts, not like a social contract, real agreements, consent. Uh, communities of, of plurality of different types of preferences. The community is 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, right? Under government though, you don't have that freedom to associate or disassociate. It's one preference forced into everyone into a geographic region. 
right? Mm -hmm. That's that's what voting does. Yeah. And that's where it becomes political warfare. That's where we get a lot of the strife. Instead of trying to find again plurality is a non-violent solution. So everybody applying their day-to-day -day lives and let's solve these complex problems that we know that violence can't solve. Yeah. So security, for example, in service you never agreed to, never gave consent, but you're forced to. Before you were born, you're forced to even pay for it, and yet you'll yeah. never have this when it's time for you to retire. Hopefully, I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. it's, 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 these are un yeah. these are unfunded liabilities, right? Yeah. So that's that's why. And then every time you have a monopoly on anything, the cost always continues to rise, mm -hmm. and quality continues to decrease. Yeah. Right. And a free market is completely the opposite, right? Yeah. Like plasma screen TVs, you know, a couple of years ago, a few thousand dollars. Today, a few hundred bucks, better version, better quality. A lot more areas to, to choose from. A lot of services to select. Yeah. Now you can compete. No one's stopping you. There's no regulation to prevent you. Yeah. I've had more time to think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's... Well, yeah. It's not that I don't trust, like, I, I think the government truly does mean good. But that's not enough, though, and it, to mean well. But it's, when it's, we run it, people run it. You don't run it. You're not a politician. Politicians can tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, yeah, but, but we you can't vote tell. the idiots in. Your yeah. choices are evil or evil. If that's against your moral position, let go of evil. And right? that's the problem with the system. The you system is evil. Well, you, the system's not evil. It's the people that are evil. But the, even if the people were good, the system is funded on violence, on theft, on extortion, on kidnapping, on throwing people into rape cages. That's how it runs itself. There's nothing, no aspect about it that's good. I mean, but pot is becoming more, like, for example, pot is becoming more and more socially acceptable. It was a socially acceptable 75 years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but so it, it doesn't have Because of racism and other, yeah. It's, all right, all right, all right. It was made illegal because of racism. Right, it was made illegal for, for, for the war on drugs. It was made illegal a lot of ways that the government can profit off. But a lot of communities were already ready for it 75 years ago. 75 years to finally have the freedom to smoke a plant is not a measure of success to gain one scrap of our freedom, we have lost so many others in the same amount of time. That's not a matter of success. It's one step forward, thousand steps backwards. Repeal one law, thousands more come and take their place. National Defense Authorization Act, the Patriot Act, the Monsanto Act. Now, um, reformers is another way of saying that the last 99 attempts just didn't work. You can't, you can't, you can't find solutions to these problems through violence, through, through taxes. Nearly half your income now gone and stolen. Yeah. You don't well, have the freedom to just choose. Well, what about like putting someone on the moon? Do you think a corporation would just do that just because? Red Bull has an even better space program. Uh, Google's has a lot of interesting stuff that's coming out. There's a Mars mission now that's from the private sector. Uh, so in the beginning, you have uh, interesting stuff that happens when you monopolize the service, right? When you get the, all the best from the free market and you put it in a monopolized service to have no standards to increase, okay, so you have no competition, right? So you have no need to improve. That's why they kept using the same spe space shuttles for, for a long time. They started to explode. And now when, last, when was the last time we were at the moon anyways, right? Years, decades ago. 1960s, And that's 70s. the last time we'll ever get there because of, because of government. You free up the free market for research and development. You're well, not no, there was no, the reason they stopped it was just too expensive and people, you know, we were losing public interest on it. Well, they were stopped because it's unsustainable. NASA's already cut a lot of the funding for public outreach. Same thing with USPS, $60 billion in debt. That's why Detroit Didn't, didn't they become privatized recently? No. Didn't USPS it? is not privatized. I mean, I worked for UPS and I thought they got privatized. UPS? Oh, UPS. No, no, UPS is. U US yeah, but I remember USPS got right. privatized. USPS is not a privatized agency. They're monopolized. They have a monopolized charter, which is why USPS. USPS can only deliver first class mail. No one else is allowed to compete against that. They have an exclusive violent monopoly on that. FedEx and UPS and DHS, DSA can only deliver packages. There's a guy 100 years ago named Lysander Spooner who tried to challenge that. Because uh, in the Constitution it says the government can create a post office, but it doesn't say they have the exclusive right. So he says, you know what? Then I'll compete. And he, did, he called it the American Letter Mail Company. Mm -hmm. And he did it better, faster, cheaper, effectively. Eventually the government kept suing him, suing him, pushed him out of business. And then Congress has passed the law and says, no one. <laughs> We're not having that again. <laughs> no one's allowed to compete against the USPS. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't, there's no other alternative options. What are your thoughts on the Federal Reserve then? Uh, same thing. It's, same uh, thing? it's a monopoly on, on currency. That's, that's, um, so before 1913, it used to be rich, diverse different like, uh, ways to, to trade. Right? Uh, another commodity, like money is another form of money, like a paper clip or a car is just a medium of exchange. So when you monopolize anything again, that's why it's lost over 97% of its value. Then how do you feel about like international currency, like a euro or right. uh, a 
Monomero. Yeah, uh, all the stuff are monopolized currencies for those respective uh, states, and as a result, that's why the UK's pound has lost over 96% of its value. Yeah. Uh, but you look like, it, have you heard of Bitcoin? Yeah, I have. Digital currency? Okay, so this yeah. is an interesting area. This is gaining value, there's real scarcity. Um, this is. Uh, uh, I remember it's just. It's, I, it's really unstable, though, isn't it? Uh, no, it's been recent areas of stability. Uh, it's, it's, it's continued to increase in value. But the, the instability with the US dollar continues to go down. Right? Yeah. 97% loss. That hurts the poor the worst. No incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your bed mattress is depreciation value. Right? So that's the complete option. At least Bitcoin will not throw you into a cage if you try to compete against them. Yeah. There's a guy who tried to create the Liberty Dollar a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Iris came in, seized his assets, threw him in a cage. How dare you compete against the US dollar? Right? Right. So that's the inherent violence of these monopolies. And that's the thing, I, I, want, I want the freedom to compete. I want the freedom to provide you a better service or product that's not going to be harmful and abusive for you, or that you have the freedom to select, freedom, real freedom of economic choice. Yeah. You don't have that under government. They, they, they escape from their own liability, they have immunity. If they, were, they have the lowest percentage rates of uh, Congress approval, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they would have been fired a long time ago if that was a real business. I mean, I think they should be fired. <laughs> Get them all fired. <laughs> I mean, I think they should have fired when they didn't show up to their jobs like, right? a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what I mean. So, so it's funny, it's all we're told uh, if you're a government employee, of course, you know, uh, you don't get paid, but as a politician, you do, right? Yeah. So then this is what happens when you monopolize these services. They hold them at hostage from you, mm -hmm. like trying to go uh, walk to the park, right? And the way that they prevented people, tourists, from leaving their, their hotels, people who even have property in federal lands, they can't go there because, you know, we've been for low, you know, right. because uh, government shut down. So all the monopolized services they hold from you, they hold it at hostage. Even though you're paying for it, you're not, you can't receive it. In a free market, so what if McDonald's closed down? There's cookout, there's Burger King, yeah. there's Wendy's. You have choices, yeah. right? Under government, they don't allow even that choice. Mm -hmm. So they even suffocate you even further. Some interesting ideas. Yeah, man. But, uh, All right, well, I'm here pretty much every day. We have more questions or how a free... I, I, I do society. agree, government is in war and we shouldn't be bombing people that I've never even met right. 10,000 miles away and all that. So like defense, we could still have better defense in a free market, right? You At least you'd be able to say 10 years, never threw anyone into a case for victims crime. Well, see... That's the whole nationalism thing. You need a centralized... You can't have like private contractors because it's the person with the biggest buck that can just buy them out and be like, hey, we want our ideals over here. Sure. Yeah. It's voluntary consensual contracts agreements. You don't have a contract agreement with the military here today. Yeah, I know. Well, uh, they're, you still they're have protecting to pay, yeah. protecting from what? From people we've never met? The children they throw bombed out of existence? I mean... What do those children do to you? Right? Nothing, that, no, I'm not worried about them. Right, but that's but that's <laughs> if you're paying for that. And a, as a private business, if they did that, they go bankrupt the next day. Like again, control goes back to you as a consumer. Mm -hmm. they, this is, they can't force you to buy the service or product. At least now you have thousands of different ones you can select from. Thousands of different choices. Right? Even you can compete now and say, you know what, forget them, I'll provide you better service. Right? So it's not just one national defense, it's hundreds of thousands of choices you can make. That's that just seems to sketchy to me. Well, it's like when you go to a mall, there's a lot of different search, search uh, stores that sell t-shirts. It's like, how, how dare you compete with Gap and Navy? Just, people will find different ways to meet those prices. See, but that just seems like a bunch of gangs running around with AKs and tanks and being like, oh, hire us, or oh, hire us, oh, hire us. Well, you us. find it already today, like golf course communities. You go to Disney World, they have security. When you go to a nightclub, yeah, they have those the are security guards. So, yeah, that's what you'll have. That's what you'll have, security guards. To prevent someone who wants to initiate that force. That's it. And without uh, government... Well, what if no there was like a major conflict with like another world power? Okay, well... Uh, let's, let's say... Yeah, but without government, there's no taxes. The only reason why a lot of governments take over other governments is the tax system. Mm -hmm. The only reason Hitler wanted to take over France is to take over the tax system, help fund his war machine. And now you're not just facing uh, one defense agency in the, in the geographic mass in North, North America with hundreds of thousands of communities. You're facing those same very numbers, hundreds of thousands of different ways people can provide defense for each other. And they'll come as a coalition, defeat the... This is pretty, just historically people used to do this all the time. Like in Europe, people were doing land grabs and all the other uh, states will combine and, and defeat them. Things go back into his arbitrary lines and positions again. So what's stopping me from hiring 
a uh, one of these defense contractors sure. and just running around VCU with a bunch of tanks and being like, this is my campus now. Uh, well, this, the people here have their own security company uh, and they'll find your, uh, you'll find your security company will be outmatched by all the different security companies that have a contract in the event one of them wants to go rogue, well, you're not against them. Uh, and the thing is, we'll find out who your customers are, we'll socially ostracize them. You'll never have access to, to the market again. This kind of happens on eBay. Bad, a person provides a bad service, bad, bad product, doesn't match the description, you're socially ostracized by the entire community. You're rated down. No one does business with you. You can have all the money in the world, but no one you know, won't have electricity, you won't have the internet. See, but there's a potential for someone really bad to be able to get a snowball effect going on. This you is not, not what you have now, then. You do, but yeah. I mean, we run it as people. You don't run it. We, I have both, so I run it. You, you, you drive a tank. No, you I don't shot, drive. You, you, I you, don't you, drive a tank. You, don't, I, you, you, I, or you're not part of we. I we. could go into the military right now, yeah. drop out of school, yeah. and drone bomb children overseas. Oh, I don't want to do that. I was in the military to myself, and not that I was defending our freedoms or granting us more freedoms, but the sad reality, the truth is, we continue to lose more freedoms over time. You can't say you're freer today than you were five years ago, ten years ago, fifty years ago. That's because the government's getting worse and worse and worse. That's and the only way it has to I, go. Like I said, I yeah. agree. The government. All right, all right, all right. Then let's agree with that. So but why, how, why not go all the way and not adv and stop advocating for it? Have that integrity and consistency with your beliefs and your ideas. Why can't you go all the way? It's. It's because it has the potential for abuse. Government just has like just like communism had total potential for abuse. It was there has never really been a pure communist society, you know. Look, but it's always been totalitarian, and the government says what should be done. It's not. It's the people that need to decide, you know. It's the government shouldn't. If communism would only work if on paper, because you need the collective will of people to decide what needs to be done. You in know? a free and voluntary society, you can live in a community of collectiveness that you don't believe in property rights. Great, as long as it's voluntary. And if under any form of government, it's not. That's why communism failed. Oh yeah. That's well, why United States, the democracy is failing. That's why the decadence. Then why is the Chinese? Why are the Chinese doing so well? I don't know. They are have they? A, they're doing pretty fantastic, and they have a very strict government uh, well we, we could further examine that but you look at the, the monopoly on, on the euro in, in, in Europe for example the, all of this collapsing Iceland Greenland uh, Italy Spain the, the uh, countries that don't Detroit really produce here uh, San, San, uh, San Cremento next Philadelphia next unfunded liabilities leads to that collapse it's because they're losing all their productive capabilities. It's because they have a monopoly in these services. It continues to depreciate and they're, the they're losing their business to other people. What do you mean what? other people? Detroit? Well, they're, they're losing car, business because of all their tax rates, the regulation. That's why people move out of there. I mean, it make it too hard for people to own their own wealth and their happiness and their productivity. Yeah, I would want to Actually, I can answer the question why China's doing so well. Chote, enlighten me. I don't know if they are or not. If that's uh, an absurd of Steve. They, like well, they're make, manufacturing most of the world's goods, correct? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is made in China. I'm pretty sure this could have been made in Thailand or China. Well, they have you, no regulation. You, did you want to pay $20 more for that shirt? Oh, wow. No. Well, that's why they're being outsourced. They're outsourced to meet the demand of you want cheaper products. Unless you want to really pay a $500 more for but Apple. But the thing is, would you rather live in a world where you can get your goods for cleaner and cheaper? I like to live or in a world where... Would you where rather have your goods made overseas in a where it's destroying the atmosphere and polluting the grounds. And right. Some of those yeah, factories yeah. are so and cheap. Thank you. And the only reasons why they're able to do that is because they allow exemption for immunity from government. Yeah. The people who actually have own their own land when this pollution comes onto, mm -hmm. they don't own their own land. They don't, you don't have the freedom to, to say this belongs to you. There's eminent domain. The government has more of a right over your own property than you do, over your body, over your life. That's why they allow corporations so in a free to market, have immunity. In a completely free market society, you don't think that some factory that buys a lot of land next to your house won't just pollute the entire all right, all right, surroundings. Alright, so this is good. So I have an insurance contract that says I don't want pollution in my environment near the stream of my house. And of course the insurance would have this kind of contract with a lot of people in this neighborhood. There's a parcel of land that somebody that's a uh, pollution factory wants to come and create and buy up. So as an insurance company, well, if I were to allow them to buy that land, I have to pay everybody out over a million dollars. It just probably cost me $500,000 to buy that parcel of land. I'll do it first and sell it off to someone else that's not going to cost pollution. Avert crisis averted.
You'll find free market. So they, you, they would have to buy you out pretty much. Yeah, so yeah, your insurance company buy out because it's more cost in incentive to buy the land than a lot of pollution company come in there and you have to pay out everybody else who has a you know pollution clause in their contract. But in the long term, do you, you don't think that's a bad idea? What do you mean? Uh, pollution, pollution is, some pollutions you can't just, it just doesn't go away. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, and a lot of, a lot of the, the technology everything. that they create has been is subsidized by government. You don't allow the renewable, uh, awesome ways so to, to harness that energy. Like the electric cars trying to compete in North Carolina, North Carolina the government tried to prevent them from entering the market. Yeah. Right? So they prevent a lot of that new stuff coming out to replace all this old type of fossil fuel technology that's backed in, in the grant enforced by government. Yeah. Right? So without government, you free up a lot of uh, free market solutions. You free up technological innovations. Uh, a lot of R&D, you're not invested in lobbying, goes back into the research and development of creating awesome technology. Course, Nearly. factory not to pollute, right? And incentivizes them to try to figure out. Yeah. Ways to create goods without pollution. Yeah. That's what you'll find. I have pamphlets if you're interested. A lot more <coughs> uh, resources in the back there that you might find of uh, reviews. Oh no, he's a good friend of mine. We, yeah. we get us together. I have a YouTube channel trying to answer address a lot of this stuff, but for the most part, I'm out here every day. So, uh, have more questions or how a free and voluntary society would work. At least it'll be uh, contracts that we will have, real agreements, right? Social contract is not a real contract. The Constitution is not a real contract. You never gave power of attorney. <laughs> um, you know, if it's wrong and illegal for someone to sign your name on a, on a person of it, on a document, it's wrong for anyone, no matter how old you were or how long ago that was. Right. Uh, so that's what I want. Real agreements, consent. You don't have consent with government. It just seems that the potential for abuse is so strong, you know? It's, it is scary. Yeah. Uh, but again, all the other areas that, um, I mean, you have no corporations, so you don't have no limited liability uh, corporations that escape from personal liability. Uh, like the oil spill off the coast of Alaska. The CEOs didn't lose their jobs, lose their home, lose their money. They didn't face anything negative. As a corporation, you offset the cost by lowering uh, employee so salaries, raising consumer prices. But be without government, there's no corporations. Yeah. So you don't really have a lot of areas to abuse. You try your hardest. What's going to stop them from, what's going to stop people from forming corporations? You can't. There's no government. Without a government. So a government has a, mon the only reason you need a government, mon government has the tax system. You can steal everyone's wealth to fund a standing army. Right, having armies is very costly. Uh, there's no example in history of a business being able to take over a geographic region without the support and assistance of a government. That's you can look at Blackwater. Look at UPS, for example. That's yeah. a corporation. What if they wanted to merge with FedEx? Sure, go for it. Okay, now they have a monopoly on moving packages. Uh, well, there's DHL. Well, let's say DHL doesn't exist, okay? Well, they do exist. Well, I guess then, then there's... This uh, is theoretical. Then there's uh, X, Y, and Z, because I just created a business. There's no government regulation to restrict me from competing. Well, then you have this giant conglomerate that's sure. running around. You don't think they're going to try and stomp out all the competition? How are they going to stomp all the competition? They have the resources and the money. They have their they trillion dollar business now because it's UPS and FedEx. Sure. So... How do they not have the resources to? Well, in the same way, Apple has like a great product, but there's still Dell, there's still Microsoft, there's still new ones to come up every year. Of course, every yeah. That's what you'll have. If you if you have a good product like Apple, go going all the way for a while. Yeah, sure. But you, you it won't just be Apple. Mm -hmm. It'll be Microsoft. There'll be different business to meet different preferences. Not one preference. Well, for a company things. like FedEx or UPS to spring up, you need incredible amounts of resources to start it because. Just one hub was about five square miles inside the building, and you need to move probably like 50,000 packages a day sure. to just stay afloat. And well, you know what? How, I think how are you going to just I pop think, that up? I, I think it's awesome that they figured out a way how to do that to begin with. I think it'd be awesome if they were have the freedom to compete in delivering first class mail, they'd be able to create a cool, awesome infrastructure to figure that out. People mm -hmm. will come together and put them to figure that stuff out. Uh, that's that's the beauty of the free market. That's the beauty about like iPhones. I don't know how people put this stuff together, but people have done it. Um, like the roads, for example. People build roads. Businesses build roads. Government doesn't really build anything. They steal your money and they outsource it to the politically connected, the lowest denominator, the lowest quality of goods. That's why it's like it's driving around the moon here in Richmond. 
So, but again, you don't have the choice to decide who can best provide you a system of roads. And but for the most part, though, a lot of business will take it upon themselves to build roads because they want to to go to a place of business. Right. Like um, like in the beginning with Starbucks, it costs like sometimes a few dollars to have internet access a few years ago. Now they give it away for free. Right. Um, they're trying to encourage that that good wealth of access to to their business for you to have a good time for your own mm -hmm. comfort. When you go to a mall, they provide free security. Right? You don't have to pay for that. They even build roads inside that security, inside that mall. Uh, even outside that for parking. This business will come together and find ways to kind of resolve this in a mutual advantageous way. A win-win solution. You know, with government, it's a win-lose situation relationship. You know, you don't have a freedom of economic choice. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> But we have uh, monthly freedom gatherings, philosophical discussions, becoming me and trying to find. All right, so one example where it's worked in the area of security, it takes over an hour for the police to respond to Detroit because it's, it's, it's collapsed, the government's collapsed. Um, and that's inevitably that's gonna reach all, all cities across the country, but so it takes over an hour. This guy created his own security company, uh, Viper Threat Management Systems. And this company will pr protect these neighborhoods. And these people are voluntarily paying for that service. He's not throwing anyone to a cage for victimless crime, and crime rates have dropped down dramatically, mm -hmm. right? So you can still have security, you can still have competition. You can't, you know, so what if like they, they find one crooked cop? I want, I want that business to go bankrupt, <laughs> right? Grant me the freedom to compete. Grant me the freedom to, to choose. Stop taking my money and, and enforcing that on me if I don't want that service. But that's how government's funded. That's why taxes continue to increase. Um, that's why, I, you know, every single law, every single way that they've uh, like reformed legislation, just the different ways to extort your money. Like, um, like talking on the phone, for example. They just came out here, right? They catch you talking on the phone while you're driving. They'll extort you like hundred dollars, two hundred dollars next time because it's just a distraction. Uh, but you look at places in Europe where they remove all the traffic lights, all the traffic stop signs. Traffic improved. Traffic congestion went down, traffic accidents went down. They found that if we remove government from that, from the entire system, things actually improved. It become a shared road experience. You make eye contact with one another, right? You're not paying attention to the lights. Yeah. You know? And that spontaneous order creates efficiency. Different ways we negotiate, different ways we voluntarily find ways to, to achieve uh, optimum uh, efficiency. Okay. I'm Cal, by the way. Mike. Mike. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's like you're an only friend. You got a lot of people there. Yeah, a little bit. You stuck on like the... the no, it's just... Government is evil, but it's... We can... We can change it. We just have to have the will to. You have to write your fucking con congressman. I mean, no one fucking... I don't want to raise strangers. Uh, who are they to have so such power over my life? What I can and cannot do. Uh, who are they to, to ha have that position to, to tell me yes, to I legislate have, my life? To force a preface onto me. Yes, I, was gonna, like, you I never met side. them. Never grew up with them. I never they never wrote to me. Right. I mean, when this country was founded, it wasn't as immense as it is now. I mean, yeah. well, that's well, that's what happens when you have one aspect of government control. It continues to escalate and turns into that Leviathan. It can never stay small. The only time it was limited and small was in 1776. See, that's the thing. Like small things can grow big, and when you have a free market, things naturally want to compound. Well, yeah, it's a free market, but it's all voluntary. Complete opposite. What we have now is a state I mean, communism market. was completely voluntary, That's, too. No, it's not. What will we'll form a communism when you have Stalin stealing everyone's lands, murdering, right. assassinating people? See? That's government, though. See? He it always compounds it. into that. But that's government. He was only, you're only able to do that through government. You have no government in a free market. This is a state-controlled market. That's why they're allowed to escape and have uh, able to do that. I mean, you have Obama drone bombing children, <laughs> right? And so they call the Boston uh, incident that took place a, few, a couple months ago a uh, terrorist attack. But overseas, they call it collateral damage. And that's where they control these words. They'll say, you're not allowed to steal, we'll call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder, we'll call it organized war. Right? They hide well, objectively what things really are. Especially in the nation of course, they do. They're governments. They right. Lie. So, they lie, so why, why advocate for that? Why legitimize that? Why want why anything not, to do with it? Why not try and change it? You can't. You can't change evil. That's hopelessness, dude. You gotta go. You gotta. People have been trying to change it for over three hundred years. Yeah, I, I can fight the power by trying to ostracize it, by diminish it to the point it's gone and we don't need it anymore. 
to transition peacefully to a free and voluntary society where no one has to get hurt, no one has to be thrown into a cage. We're already living in a cage to begin with. No, I want real freedom. I don't want anyone to get hurt trying to do that. I don't want anyone to die for that. There's ways to go about it. There's ways to, to fight the matrix. But you can't fight it yelling at buildings. You can't fight it writing, uh, trying to connect with a stranger who doesn't care. He only looks at you as tax cattle. They're sociopaths. You know that. They're so they're so just out of touch with us. So what so let's ignore them. Let's create our own community and turn away from them. Which one? Turn away from the government. You can create something beautiful, something great, something grand. Found on real first principles. The, the matches are our moral integrity. The matches are values. Everything the government's against. So it's basically it comes down to a single state entity versus economic an anarchy. Yeah. yeah. So would you rather have the possible tyranny of a super corporation potentially taking over, theoretically, or a government where a few entities can, can be easy to I, I believe, I really think that governments can be good because the power is all focused in one spot. You can easily go, if the government it becomes truly tyrannical, you can easily eliminate it. You can, it's everywhere. It's not just in the White House, it's not at the federal level, it's at the state level, it's in the municipality levels, it's here in the city of Richmond. You have architectural review boards, they can tell you what you can and can't do people. with your house. Those are all people. Right, so that's where it's infiltrated people, our society. People like you and me. Those people have been granted political rulership over your life, strangers. So what I mean, you can they Probably. haven't told me to do anything. I mean, I, I'm a good person. I Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, me too, me too, me too. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying the different ways that control is permeated into a culture to, to allow this sort of stuff to exist. It's not really small anymore. It's huge. It's all around us. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the point I'm trying to say. It's not really concentrated. It's dispersed. It's hard to pinpoint. It's all very much interconnected. Uh, different forms of control, different layers of control. I don't feel that way though. I don't understand, I don't understand. There's, there's, there's municipalities and the, the county level all the way to state level. It's all to have our voices heard. What, what we heard? Who's not hearing I mean, you? rule number one, Who's constitution, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. I mean, they're not out? listening. Why? Wh who's, who's not listening? The government's not listening. Who's the government? Yeah. My senator. Your, your senator. The, the senator. one who I voted for. The one you voted for. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, so he's not listening to you. He's not accepting your phone calls. NSA's listening though, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what? Oh my gosh, my government spy, you know? That's just a government thing to do. They've been doing that since <laughs> the 1400s, man. So you have no, no freedom of privacy? I mean, am security. I being listened to? Probably not. Am I a threat to the government? Hell no. no. I'm not going to go bomb the freaking capital. They'll, they'll go ahead and bomb other places themselves for you on your behalf. Cool. Yeah. If they bomb the capital, I'll be stoked. Well, not the capital. Other people's capitals, uh, villages. They're not going to uh, do that. That's an act of war. They've, they've, they've done that. I love Nanobots. Yeah, done they that. have done Afghanistan, that. Afghanistan, uh, Vietnam, Korea. Uh, there's You're a lot of war with them. <laughs> so, that, and the government's created that stuff. The government initiated that. Mm -hmm. This is the United States we're talking about. The United States has murdered 30 35 million people since World War II. What makes you think they value you as a human being? They value your life. They don't even care about what they do to other people in other countries. They don't care about the environment. They don't care. Yeah, true that. Right? So let's, why, why continue to support that the West doesn't care about you? I want real freedom in my life. I don't want to die a tax life. I don't want to keep holding a sign begging to be free. I don't want to, I want to use my real voice. They want to tell you your voice is a piece of paper to chat as a lever because they're afraid if you actually use a real voice, you can reach out and connect with your community. You can reach out and, share and find out we share these fundamental values against violence. That we have this more integrity against that. And we can unite together as a community against that fascism, against that tyranny. And if we actually use our real voices, we realize we never needed them to begin with. Is it a libertarian group or an anarchist group? Free market anarchism. Sorry, I can't buy it, man. Yeah, no, take it easy, man. I'm having a hard time buying it myself. Okay. We have a, so you've heard of Bitcoin, right? Yeah. We're having a Bitcoin workshop, uh, and next freedom gathering. 
mostly like a um, potluck, philosophical discussions, mm -hmm. uh, finding ways, uh, I guess non violent ways, to circumnavigate, I guess, this, uh, the matrix. Um, finding, I guess, for free market solutions outside of it. And uh, on, on the back of the, um, the pamphlet, it's a lot of interesting books, the resources. And the thing about the free market, though, not one person has the answer to it. It'd, it'd be a very interesting social experiment. Yeah. yeah. Just to see how it goes. And if it does work, then holy shit. <laughs> but it's just, I really have little faith that it would work. Because right. the, pa the potential for abuse is just too great. Yeah, it will have to be a community united on these values. I think that's an important part. And that's why I think it, it starts off with just talking. Change yeah, at the beginning. It's good, it's good on paper, but how does it actually work? Well, in it starts already in your, in your day to life. You don't use violence to solve problems. So let's start there. All right, let's start, uh -huh. with, let's start with that. And reaching out to each other, we realize that many of us don't use violence to solve problems. And let's unite those, those people. That's the best form of self defense. The ones who do. Right. So they're going to be part of your society, too. Well, you no, no, because if they, don't, if they don't agree, then they're not part of my community. Of course they'll agree. They'll be like, oh, sweet, I can abuse this. Oh, great, if they think they can abuse it. Then the for best form of self-defense against would-be psychopaths and sociopaths would be to unite your community with these values against that would-be would aggressor if they aggress against any member of our community. Where are you going to go if you aggress against any member of our community? But just no. like you and me, we're disagreeing on something, and you're not going to disagree while someone's going to run amok and be like, oh, this is mine, this is mine. What are you talking about? Just like that sociopath. Well, who's well, going to let him into like, that say community? Say you and me are having an issue, yeah. and then person C over there, is running amok and being like and grabbing up all they can grabbing all they can yeah uh, and so obviously the security I paid for failed they allowed a stranger in here um, they're gonna lose business someone's gonna say hey we'll never let this happen to your community hire us instead who let him through the gate who let him in that golf course community who let him into that 420 friendly community you know somebody did an error in their job because you know obviously they allowed someone that's going to have been there to begin with. right there's the woods if you, you know civilization belongs to the civilized um, if people have problems there's still be a non-profit organization hey looks like you have some problems let's go see some anger management class so let's see if there yeah, well, like, that's, uh, that's, that that's a flaw man the civilized uh, civilization belongs to the civilized yeah. civilization is uncivilized it's it, unci government is the most uncivilized organization that exists it decivilizes us that's what government does it turns us into barbarians, it turns us into that we, neighborhood thieves. We formed government in order to establish rule. You didn't form it. You were not alive back then. That was a forced contract. It, I was born you. into it. Right, just like in the Matrix. You're born into the system. You have no freedom of economic choice. Whereas they rob your productivity, your labor, your wealth, your happiness, nearly 40% of your income gone. No freedom of economic choice for you to decide. Still have to pay Social Security. Still have to pay Obamacare, even though you're young and healthy. Different ways that they kind of ruin people's lives. Victimless crimes, mm -hmm. right? Over a million people in these rape cages, more than any other country in the world. That's got to say something. What are these rape cages? The government has rape cages. Oh, uh, statistically wise, more men are raped than women uh, in this uh, in this country and in, in the American prisons. Sucks for them. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of them are for victimless cries. A lot of them are for, for the things that people voted the preference for. That's government. That's American justice. That's monopoly on justice. I want real justice. I want, I want polycentric legal systems. I want the freedom to choose the rules and the consequences. I want real consent, real agreement. Something I can put my name and sign it to. You don't have that with government. <laughs> And the, again, the great thing about it, in a free market, not one person is going to have the answer to it. You liberate the world, you liberate billions of minds, billions of creative ideas to find interesting answers and solutions to these, to these problems. It's not one centralized version of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Closing argument. All right. Well, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for stopping by then. Yeah. What was it? My name is Cal. Cal? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I have a really strong belief that everything in moderation. Yeah, I want a peaceful transition. I'm not saying well, oh, you're in the state and where the opposite of you is complete and total like totalitarian communism. You're on the opposite side of that. This is I'm totalitarianism. So this is not totalitarian, is it? I don't have people telling me what to do. I did. I don't well, have I people telling me where I to go. I had a guy with a gun tell me I can't I have freedom of speech if I stand outside of that circle. Yeah, this is happening here. 
that little circle is where you only have the constitution of freedom of speech. Outside of it, you have to beg ahead of time uh, to have the freedom to even talk to you. This is happening to me two weeks ago. What, in person? Here, no, here at VCU, here at the Compass. Huh. Different forms of tyranny that take shapes in place. The government has done a great job in hiding that violence from you. Like you see all the violence in Vietnam, and people are like, oh, in the war and all that stuff. They've done a great job hiding now the violence from Iraq, from Afghanistan. You don't see those images anymore. That's why you don't see a lot of this, uh, this momentum people have in anger towards it. They've done a good job hiding that violence. And that's how it, it continues to exist. As long as they can hide it efficiently, it's difficult to see. See, if this is the opposite end of the spectrum, and you're over here. I guess anarchy is not on the I'm, spectrum. I'm right here. Yeah. I'm right here. I'm, I'm halfway between over here and here. I'm right here. All right, man. I, I get I get your views, and I can see why you see them the way you do. But it's just being taken a little too far. I think I think we should tone down government. I don't think we I don't, should. I don't want to turn down evil. We mentioned it was evil. I don't want to have a Well, if you have a smaller evil, government, it's still evil. Evil is still no, evil. Not. If you have a smaller government, you have more control over you it. You still have someone telling you what you can and cannot do with your life. Regardless of what way you want to measure that. That's, that's the end point. That's, that's, that's still the point of representative democracy. That's still slavery. You're not free. I want I'm real free. freedom. I'm free. I'm free. You're free to take a toke. You're free not to uh, I'm free, pay free to. your taxes. You're I'm free, free to uh, walk away right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm free to go home. I'm free to go to Canada. You're only as free as they allow you to be. You're only as free as the tax cattle they allow you to be in the tax firms you're in. That's only as free as you are. And that's all we are to in this tax cattle. I mean, I don't pay taxes. I don't have a job. <laughs> right, right. Well, you pay in form of know, sales the tax. I, the ma money I do you, make. You pay them in the form of sales tax. The clothes you buy, a lot of imports, a lot of tariffs, a lot of added costs that could have been cheaper. You lose it in the opportunities for work, for employment, the government regulations that prevents businesses from, from uh, being able to pay all the salaries. Hardywood um, Parks Brewery over here, uh, they had to pay like uh, tens of thousands of dollars of back taxes. But in the last year when they came to the city, it's like, hey, you sure beer is not a meal? We don't have to pay meal taxes. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. A few weeks ago now, they're saying, yeah, actually you do. So that's tens of thousands of dollars that could have been, the owner said, for, for the salary of a new employee. So as a government now, you're stealing people's money to fund your position of your own job of stealing other people's potential job. Could have money reinvested into growing and hiring and innovating, R&D. Nearly half of your income again returned back to you. A lot of different ways to rob us of opportunity. We need taxes. Well, it's That's so difficult. It's difficult to see what what it could be. Just like you end the institution of slavery, you end, you, you you freed up free market solutions like dust croppers, uh, fossil fuels, different ways to to uh, harness agriculture. Same thing will happen if you end like of government in this institution of violence. Awesome free market solutions, creative ideas. So, one last question. Yeah. How would this go down? Uh, so it would go down as uh, you, you, you only need a few thousand anarchists or voluntarists or uh, you only need several thousand. Detroit last year, 47% of all homeowners did stop paying their property taxes. Just stop. And so you can get to that point together, united, we can protect our own property when we have enough numbers to say, okay, we're done paying taxes. We're done. All this information, all this philosophy, it's the antithesis of government. All this information, government doesn't want anyone to know that you own yourself, the taxes is theft, that uh, they're nothing but political rulers. Last thing they want, they didn't want to hear it about. Mm -hmm. So we protect ourselves, we protect our community, like that guy in DC didn't have. So of course, they, you know, his house got seized, threw him in the street. We have a real protection, and that that's, that's how it starts peacefully, right? We we encourage each other to to I guess harness our the areas of expertise and our skills, create free market businesses, get ready for those transitions, get ready to to create the the services the government has monopolized. You know, it starts, change doesn't start in the White House in D.C. It doesn't start in countries we've never been to. You know, it starts with ourselves at home, within our own community. For me, it starts here in Richmond. It starts drawing that moral line and uh, starting first principles, going all the way. No compromise. All right. All right, man. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Come back and talk to us, man.